All right, so in this video, I want to talk about a few things, and that is the topic of child neglect and child abuse and what we're doing with this channel here, what I'm doing with this channel here. So here goes nothing. I'm going to just jump right into it. There are times, I'm a, I'm a really nice guy, okay? I'm a really nice guy, I'm a very particular guy, I know what I like, what I don't like, and I am not afraid to speak about those things. Uh, I will say there's a difference between speaking about the things you like and you don't like, uh, and being rude and mean and hurtful. Um, but I also believe in that it's important to allow people to be themselves, to do things that are well within their rights, right? To do things that, just because someone doesn't like what you're doing, doesn't mean you don't have the right to do what you're doing. Especially if it's um, morally okay. So, for example, and trust me, we're gonna come back to this example. If I'm driving in a uh, speed zone that is 50 miles per hour, and I'm driving at 50 miles per hour, and a police officer comes and stops me and says, hey, you have to drive at 40 miles per hour. Everyone else can drive at 50 miles, but you have to drive at 40 miles per hour. I would say, well, that's bullshit, and I'm gonna drive however fast I want, as long as it's within the speed limit. Um, we're gonna get back there. So the other week, uh, it was last week, um, I got a um, phone call from someone at DCFS. They called me and they said, hey, are you home? We're at Aviva, your agency. And I said, yes, I'm home. What's up? And he goes, well, I'm at Aviva. I'm with the emergency response team. Uh, I need to talk to you about something. I was like, what do you, what? Okay. And he goes, don't worry. It's nothing to worry about. Everything's okay. Don't, don't worry. I was like, okay, cool. So he gets to my house about 20, 25 minutes later. We sit down here and we're talking. And he goes, well, uh, we have a, a, a complaint or something like that about your social media with the children. And <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I'm not doing anything wrong. Okay. And he says, right off the bat, he goes, I looked at your Instagram and I watched your YouTube. You're not doing anything wrong. Um, you, and he says verbatim, I couldn't tell who you're talking about. Um, and he goes, and then he had some questions, like some specific questions he had, to, he had to ask me. I do believe they were pr pretty like standard questions. And I answered them fine. I wasn't worried at this point. I reported it back to Aviva and let them know, just so they stay in the loop. Um, he, he walks in, he checks, uh, you know, they have to check the refrigerator, make sure about the food you have, and they have to check, uh, um, you know, he had to check how many diapers I had for the babies. So he leaves, he's like, okay, don't worry. Um, th this is, I, th I have nothing, no concerns. Um, you know, I'm gonna uh, close this case out. I'm gonna send it to my supervisor and we're gonna, um, and it'll be done. So I'm like, okay, cool. Um, that was on a Monday. Uh, and then on a Friday, last Friday, I got a ring at my door downstairs. And there's a woman at my door and I'm like, when I, when someone shows up my house and I don't know they're coming, I know it's DCFS. So she showed up and they will come unannounced. Like they want to like catch you in the act if you're doing something wrong, right? Um, which they should. That's that's the right thing to do if there's an emergency. Um, so they go, she comes in the house and I'm like, um, uh, 
and she's like, hi, my name's so-and-so. And she says to me, you have a child neglect and child abuse allegation against you. I looked at her, I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Um, and she was really nice. She was like really, really nice. It was almost like she was just like relaying just information, that's all. And we sat down and I was pissed. Like I told her off the bat, I said, look, I'm not happy. This is serious. Um, I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at this situation. Uh, this stuff has happened before and it's extremely frustrating to me. Um, we'll get back to that. So we're talking and um, she's like, I looked at your social media. You're not doing anything wrong. I looked at your Instagram and your YouTube. You're not doing anything wrong. So she says, well, I would just say this one thing. While you're not doing anything wrong, if posting the kids are going to make this much trouble for you, why don't you just not post them? Remember that first analogy? I looked at her and said, well, because it's well within my rights. Aviva also said that to me once. They said, you're not doing anything. We've seen your stuff. You're well within your rights. Um, I said, what you're saying to me is if I'm driving 50 miles per hour on the street and it's a 50 mile per hour zone, well, Kevin, you just have to drive 40 miles per hour. Let me tell you what. One, no. I am allowed to post the pictures of the children. I have to block out their eyes. Okay? Just like everyone else on social media. I'm allowed to put do video. I technically could put sunglasses on the little girls or boys, but I don't do that. I blur their whole face or I blur the whole screen. Um, I don't talk about them, okay? I don't, you guys don't even know their names. Newsflash, you don't even know if the letters I'm calling them are the beginning of their names. You don't know anything about these kids. You don't know why they were detained. You don't know about their parents. You don't know about anything about the kids. This is about me and what things are like for me. Y'all know this. I don't even have to like explain this to you guys. So I have, being a gay man and a person of color and a foster parent, been pushed aside so much in my life. I will not not do something that is well within my rights. I'm doing nothing wrong. And furthermore, I am doing more for these children than anyone else in their lives are doing for them. That includes the system. The kids that come into our homes as foster parents, we do the most work for these children. I will be damned if you think I'm going to do less of my own things that are well within my rights and I am not hindering confidentiality, I am not hindering uh, or har harming these children uh, at all, I'm not taking a step back because I've been taking step backs all my life. I'm not doing it anymore. And guess what? I'm justified because I'm well within my rights, okay? So, you know, and I told her many times, I'm really, really sorry. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at this situation. And she said, look, we get these all the time. Foster uh, parents get allegations on them all the time because of, you know, some parents and they'll just try and create issues for their foster, for their kids, foster parents. Okay. So I was like, okay, I, I already know that. But what I said to her, but what you don't understand is an allegation of child neglect and child abuse is huge. I didn't know what the ramifications were of that. I didn't know if this is something that's going to follow me around. I didn't, I'm a real estate agent. Like I have to get severe background checks to get that license. It's no joke. Like I don't, I can't have that following me around for something I didn't even do. And, and it's disgusting. So, you know, again, she said, I don't see anything wrong with this. I just need to talk to social workers. <laughs> the social workers she spoke with, the kids' social workers, were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> they were like, Kevin is the best foster parent we've ever worked with. Like, 
they just didn't understand. They were like, we have no concerns about Kevin and these children. So that day on Friday happens and I decided I'm done. I, 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 I can't do this anymore. Um, I, I knew at the end of the day that she was going to have conversations with a couple more social workers that I've worked with and stuff like that. But she did make it very apparent that she's not concerned and like she expects to close this case out. Um, and I spoke my mind in other areas. I'm not gonna talk about, um, and I basically realized that after a year and a half, seven kids in, I'm done. I will continue each case. I will continue to see a baby A's case out. I will continue to see baby E's case out. Everyone I work with, all the social workers, all y'all know I would adopt both of these children and I would love to adopt the children. Um, however, I also, and I, I feel like a freaking broken record, like I support reunification. I support it. It's like, I support it. I don't know what else to say. I also support adoption. Just because I would like to adopt doesn't mean that I don't, that I think we should, we should not reunify children. If kids don't get reunified, they need adoptive parents. God, I feel like I'm talking to a second grader sometimes. Um, so, look, here's the thing. A week after those thoughts of I'm done, I, I said to myself, it's okay if I decide to do it again. If I decide to take another baby in again at some point. Um, but as of now, I'm going to see their cases out and I'll, I'll probably be done. I hope, I hope that when I say I'm gonna see their cases out, it means one or two adoptions. And if it means reunification, then it means reunification, so be it. And if I decide to take a break, I take a break. If I decide to be done forever, I take, I'd be done forever. You know, I've you, if, in the past, I said, guys, I'm done. I'm gonna do IVF, surrogacy. Um, there's, a, it, there's a fertility place out of Cancun, Mexico, and I vetted them. I I know that they're good. I they're fairly cheap. I would do that. But I also hope I don't have to do that. I hope that things continue to be good. Like all the cases were closed out. Even Aviva was like child abuse and neglect. What the hell? Why was that even said? It should have never been said. And that's the thing that like triggered me. Like. If they were just like, oh, you have this like confidentiality allegation. I would like, okay, well, I know that I'm not breaking any confidentiality stuff. But when I heard those words, I was just like, this is not cool. And even Aviva was like, well, that shouldn't have been said because it wasn't the case. And who knows, you know, a lot of workers are overworked and maybe she didn't even realize what she was saying. So she's a nice woman and I respect her and... I, I'm grateful that I got to like meet her be, and, and she was, she heard me and understood things. So I'm happy and I'm happy it's closed out. So am I going to stop doing anything I'm doing? Nope, I'm not because I'm not doing anything wrong. Um, and uh, if it keeps causing issues, well, they can review things and keep having issues because I'm not doing anything wrong. So um you know, is this a vlog? Not really, I guess. I don't know. But this is but this is part of it, guys. Like, this is the realness of foster care. And it's so freaking annoying and frustrating. I've even had a social worker say to me, I don't understand why the system treats you guys like you are glorified babysitters. That is what happens. It's not okay. That is why you lose amazing ass foster kids, foster parents like myself. That is why. Because they treat us like babysitters. And it's not okay. We're not babysitters. We are the ones that take these kids to countless uh, doctor's visits. We have social workers showing up at our houses unannounced at all times of the day and night, whenever they want. We do visits all the time with biological family. We put ourselves in, 
in uncomfortable situations with families. We put ourselves in sometimes dangerous situations with bio families, but we do it and we do it for the kids. So I get sick and tired of people looking at us like we're the bad people. We're not the bad people. We are the best people in these, pe in these children's lives because we don't have to do this at all. We don't have to do it at all, but we step up to the plate and we do it. <sighs> That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. See you guys next week. I love you all so much. Peace out.